Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 Movie Thoughts. Now, I suppose I will start by... <sighs> yes, the, the... The whole Rhino bit Everything with him in the suit that was interesting, at least, we saw in the trailers. And if, like, if the, the guy from the start of the film, you know, if Giamatti there hadn't reappeared, we probably wouldn't really have thought anything of it. It's, it's very clearly just so that he can appear, you know, he can be part of the Sinister Six down the, down the line. And Goblin, the same kind of thing with, yeah, it, I mean, with Goblin there was some material that we hadn't seen in, in trailers and the like, but it's, if you go into this and you don't really know about Goblin, it's just going to be way confusing to you. I mean, it's, okay, so there's a suit and a glider, and he puts it on, and then he suddenly... Okay, so that's a bomb, that's a knife, what is it? I mean, we who know the comics, we who know the character, know this. And sure, I mean, I am, you know, in... In my hypothetical, one hasn't even watched the 2002 or 2007 Raimi movies. But if that were the case, then you would be completely lost. And basically, the, the scene is fan service for those of us who are not completely lost. And one of the things that I really think is, you know, part of the reason why is that this is the one where Gwen dies, and they wanted to... Yeah, they, they wanted to make the, the manner of it seem a lot like the comics. And I... I have gone on record as saying that I was not a fan of referencing that scene without taking the the consequence of it, and I won't give away what exactly I'm referring to. Those of us, those of you who know, already know, and those who don't shouldn't. But at least there it wasn't a character who had literally just appeared. Like, Goblin just comes out of nowhere and it's just... I mean, I don't mind that Harry is reappearing and telling Spider-Man, of course you can't, you know, you, you, it's... Goblin and 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 Electro are very similar in that respect. They 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 read that the same way. They need something badly that they feel that Spider-Man can give them. And when he says no, when they don't get what they want, then they, they, you know, they become aggressive, they try to destroy him. And that is, 
you know, and, and that is a good... What's the word? It's a... It's creating a pattern, you might say, that, that several, you know, if, if someone who desperately needs something comes to someone who seems to have everything and they leave empty-handed, then they might be furious with the seemingly, you know, wealthy one for not having to, and, and this is not a just one person kind of thing, you know, there, there are people, the fact that there's more than one in the same movie sort of solidifies, you know, Spider-Man can feel alone, Spider-Man can feel like it is him against the world of people who, you know, as, as much as he's cheered on in this one, beloved by the public, excuse me, he is still very much doing it by himself, excuse me, and some of the, excuse me, some of the people he tries to save, he might end up actually creating, you know, making enemies out of. And yeah, that that worked really well. It's only once once he put on the 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 suit and the glider. I will say the cackling was. I I had not really thought that you know that Dehan would and then, you know when I first heard that he was playing. Harry, I, I thought that there was an agreement that it would be done the Raimi way of, of gradually, you know, building up over several movies, instead of just rushing him into, I guess, with Norman dead, seemingly, at least bedridden, it skipped a generation. But... Yeah, it's, I, I do think that it's, you know, it's kind of cool that it is a, a sort of mutation thing. You also see that when, you know, there's, there's that thing of, you know, it's, it's dark in there, your eyes will get used to it, it's better this way, you know, and I'm just, come on, man. Chris is not that old, okay, you guys, that's, just, that's being mean. But yeah, he's clearly got some, some, you know, claw fingernails and green scaly skin and the like, so, yeah. When, you know, the, the whole Green Goblin thing, you know, it's not, it's not a suit, it's not a, yeah, it's just... At least, at least for the the face and the the hands, it's literally just their their appearance. So, yeah, and and that's you know something that also you know that's that's what he that's what Norman says to Harry early on. That it's the Osborne curse or something like that. That it's genetically transferred. So so yeah. Now, I, yes, to, to go more in depth on Gwen's death, I do think it's quite nice that they had the cojones to do it, and I think that I, th I think it was done the right way, the, the sort of, you know, this ongoing fight, and she's falling, and he's trying to hold, you know, and she falls, and he 
sends the, they even have the, the snap there at the end, like in the comics, so that's, that's very nicely done, and we actually do have, you know, he, he clearly mourns, they, they even have the, the Twilight-esque, you know, seasons change, you know, how can I live without this person? You know, only here it's actually because, you know, the person died and at a really young age. So it's not like, you know, oh, I can't believe my boyfriend left, kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's a... There, there are, so, yeah, so there are definitely some good things about it. Which is not a phrase often uttered when speaking of the death of attractive young blondes. But I digress. There are also some less... One thing is that it's pretty obvious, like, I mean, when, when we first... When Gwen is, you know, giving the speech, and, like, it's, you know, a couple hundred words, all of them vary, variations on the words life, hope, and now. You know, it's basically, just, I mean, she is literally saying, I will be dead by the time this movie is over. This, the, the recording of this speech will be dramatically ironic. I actually, are they going to end each of the movies like this, killing someone close to Peter and having him go back over the, the last message that they, you know, or a message that they gave for him to, yeah. And again, we have the, the, you know, MPD villain, so, yeah, they're apparently keeping, yeah, keeping those trends going. I, I love basically everything with Electro, the, the whole thing with, you know, first you see him just you know, a nobody, and then, you know, Spider-Man saves him, and, you know, he says, oh, you're my eyes and ears out there, and, yeah, the, the, he, yeah, we, and we hear him on the radio, and then we see the actual place and it's just, it's, it's a shrine to Peter, you know, it's, it's truly, it's, it's a sort of, it's, it's chilling to, to see, to behold, and, and this whole thing of, you know, it, it's his birthday, and, you know, he, got himself a birthday cake and act surprised because he has no one who would do that for him. And it's it's so sad and so tragic. And this strikes just the right balance because if if it wasn't dealt with just right, it would it would come off so silly and so yeah, it, it just wouldn't work at all. It would, it would be comical, not, not tragic. And instead, it is just, I mean, when he first comes out of, you know, have, having come back, you know, the, the, the stuff melting off and he's just pure electricity in the shape of the person he was, and he, you know, gets more electricity. 
you're, I was literally just sitting there, oh, don't, don't hurt him, just, you know, you, just knowing that something horrible is about to happen, something truly just, and, yeah, he, he doesn't want to cause any kind of, and, and, yeah, it's, you know, and Spider-Man does what he can to not have him be, you know, yeah, so, so that he doesn't, so that nothing actually happens, so he doesn't get shot, and, and the like. You know, I, I actually, he literally, you know, tells them, this, this here's my friend Max, nobody shoots Max, okay? Did, like, did George Stacy send out a message to, to all the cops in New York? To, me and, me and Spider are buddies now, you do what he says. I, I realize that time has passed since the first one, and they now realize that, you know, Spider-Man helped stop the lizard, but still, it doesn't, especially considering that there actually is a J. Jonah Jameson, we just don't see him in this film's universe, so, yeah, how does everyone love him like that, and the, the police willing to, yeah, that was... I actually, I sort of expected them to maybe go into, you know, them loving Spider-Man, but instead it was, it was there and it was sort of a, it was an element in the film, but it wasn't really explored, but, yeah, when, when, when Electro is suddenly being seen, you know, when, when he's on all the screens and he's like, all, all eyes are on me now, and and just and it's this. You know, he's never had this before. He's never, and then Spider-Man arrives, and suddenly everyone is focusing on Spider-Man, and then you know they start like mocking Electro, and he becomes furious with Spider-Man, feeling like Spider-Man took the spotlight back away from him. It's, you know, it was all that he really wanted was just a little recognition. You know, it, it, the whole thing starts with the, the power grid that he designed, which is also a nice, you know, nice dramatic irony that he ends up in control of the you know, power grid that he made because they refused to just, you know, give him credit for it, give him a pay raise or the like, you know. But, but yeah, the... Yeah, so, so after that, you know, when, when Harry comes in and at this point Electra has basically given up, but Harry comes in and he says, I need you to get me in, you know, wait, you mean, yes, I need you, and he zaps him, and then, you know, to, to give him more power, and then they actually really work together, that was really, it, it is just Jen, and, and, you know, and he actually does come through for Electro, Harry does give him the, the power grid, now, the, I suppose, so, yeah, and, and one of my favorite things in this was when they're like, they're talking to that guy, like, the director of the board guy, let's go with that, director. You know, they're going, and director's all like, I can't believe you even have the audacity coming in here, you freaks, you, you know, and he starts wailing on them verbally, and Electro just, you know, air 
zaps him and he falls over and then, you know, does it again. You know, he, he stopped his heart, the electricity, and he starts it back up. And it's like, we can do this all day. Or do you want to just go ahead and get me back down to the, you know, it's like, we can keep stopping and starting your heart again, however long you want, buddy. So, so yeah. And this whole thing of Electro being able to basically teleport, not teleport, but yeah, he, he lives in electricity, he, in, in the current. So, yeah, and, and there at the end where he's moving from one to the other of the, yeah, it's a, a lot of fun with, with that whole, yeah, it's just really, it's clear that he is a huge threat. And this whole thing of him having a, you know, he, he would basically have the power, pun intended, and it would be, excuse me, he would be from a nobody to the most important somebody with, uh, you know, he'd go from n nobody knowing who he is to being worshipped as you know, the god of electricity, I suppose. And, yeah, it's it's a very... You, you can really get into his character, you can really understand his motivation, and, yeah, have a lot of sympathy for him. Now, with the, with, with Gwen dying in this one, I do think, I, I'm glad that they didn't have, that they didn't introduce another love interest and like say, well, oh, moving on to this, I feel like, I, I mean, I don't know exactly what they're going to do for the next one. I've certainly heard that there might be, or is supposed to be, even was supposed to be in this one, a Mary Jane. Which, you know, uh, that, that's fine by me. I just don't want there to be like a just immediate, you know, right from one to the other especially with the puppy love that we saw between Peter and Gwen in these two. I think it might be interesting if they have a more sort of mature, more cautious, like now we've seen the first love and we've seen how tragic that went. So yeah, to, to have this sort of Yeah, a Peter who isn't quite as carefree and and such, and it's also I think it's also it's worth exploring what is Peter like. So far, we've only seen him as Spider Man when he is with or complicated, you know, with, with Gwen, it, at the very end of the film we see him, you know, as Spider-Man after she's dead, but yeah, I, th I think it would be interesting to see how he gets by without, you know, yeah, without a, a huge love in his life kind of thing, and I, I don't remember where, some, somewhere online I saw someone suggest that at least one movie should, with, with Mary Jane, should just be the two of them being friends and then, you know, maybe the one after that they start dating. Yeah, I think that would be interesting. 
and that also again it just yeah let's let's see him out of his comfort zone in in that kind of way i suppose that more or less covers it yes. please rate and comment and hey if you like this video that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it